Today on Fitness Under Fire, Greg Doucette versus Scott Herman. Should naturals listen to trainers on steroids? Welcome to Fitness Under Fire. We're a channel dedicated to discussing hot topics in health and fitness. Now keep in mind, the positions you see us take here are not necessarily our own. They're assigned randomly, but we're always going to be putting our best foot forward and making the best argument on both sides of any topic so that you can make your own decisions at home as to what you believe. Now today, our discussers are Kat and Al. And I'm Christina, I'll be your moderator today. And today's topic, Greg Doucette versus Scott Herman. Should naturals be listening to trainers on steroids? Okay. Take it away because okay. uh, I think I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, well, let, let me just give a little bit of backstory. I think everyone knows who Scott Herman is, at least most of our audience. A fairly famous fitness YouTuber. Greg Doucette is less well known. He is an IFBB uh, pro bodybuilder and, I didn't know this, world record holding power lifter. Um, who also recently has started to make a bit of a splash on YouTube. I think he has 100,000 followers now or something like that. Now recently the two got into a bit of an exchange. They quibbled over a few different topics, how much muscle you can naturally put on, etc, etc. But the point of contention that might be fun for our audience here, um, which will be what we're debating, is whether or not we should ever be listening to trainers or fitness professionals who take steroids or PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, or anything like that. No. I, I, I... No, <laughs> yeah, no, okay. over. Case closed, video over, shut it down. Ah, so you agree. Agree. Okay, but while Scott does admit, Scott does admit that trainers on PEDs can still be capable of properly training us natties, uh, he does seem to suggest that there may be a bit of a difference as to why you may prefer a natty trainer. And Greg, who is admittedly an enhanced athlete at this point in his career, tries to hammer home the point that it really shouldn't matter. So what's our take? I guess we've already heard your take. My take is, no, it really shouldn't matter. And let me just first off start off by disclosing my bias, and I do have a bias here. You're on steroids. <laughs> first off, this is going to come as a shock. It's going to come to a shock for all of us and probably a lot of our audience out there. Given this physique, it may be hard to believe, yes, I am natty. I am, in fact, a natural professional trainer. I don't so, believe it. Well, actually, let's test it out. Or did we already? Yeah, in, in another a video. In a different video. So it'll come as no shock, yes, I'm a natural. So Scott's really tugging at my heartstrings here. But I'm going to do my best to defend uh, the opposite position here. And I want to start off by pointing out something which is just empirically true. There is a common misconception that steroid users or users of performance enhancing drugs train differently or learn how to train differently or should train differently. I'm no. sorry, what did you say? There seems to be a perception. A misconception. misconception. A misconception out there. Misconception it is, a, is misconception. a bad word. Are you sure yes. that there is a reality out there that tr people on steroids train differently than the rest of us? Can I, let me finish making my point in full. Actually, Greg blasts this idea that there's a difference and we'll roll that clip. Natural and hand should train the same. Okay, so obviously Greg disagrees with this, what I do think is a misconception that enhanced lifters train and learn to train differently. Look, the same training principles apply. Now, I'm going to admit that if you train with the same training principles and you're enhanced, yes, of course you're going to look different. You're going to have um, different limits to your body. There might even be uh, some benefits to how quickly you recover. But the fundamental principles that you apply to your training need to be the same. For you to succeed, you still need to lift and train in the way that any lifter would. And this is my main point. And I'll, I'll turn it over to you. I know you want to jump in. This is like a joke. Tear this apart. The skill of a personal trainer is not contingent on whether they're on steroids. You can have a trainer, whether on performance enhancing drugs or not, and they still don't know the proper training principles. Shit trainers exist in every form. They can be male, female, enhanced, not enhanced, strong, weak. Every kind of individual is capable of being a terrible personal trainer, and there's a lot out there. Some are on YouTube, some... Okay. And the last thing that I'll say is 
Because it depends on the individual, not whether they're on drugs, you have to look at the individual to determine whether they're a good trainer, even for a natty lifter. It's not about whether they're enhanced or not. And in the case of Greg Doucette, just using him as an example, he actually had 20, 20 years, close to 20 years experience as a natural lifter. So I'm sure he knows how to train a natty. And it's always going to be trainer specific. I find it very interesting that when someone has extensive experience, uh, let's say training naturals, that they themselves choose not to be natural. But that's beside the point. I want completely to, besides the point. Well, not really. I mean, it's it's related because why are you doing something if what you're offering is uh, supposedly working, why aren't you doing the same thing? Different. Anyways, anyways, I'm going to start my actual argument. Um, and, and before I do, I want to preface it by saying, despite of whatever will follow after this, uh, let's say, warning, I actually don't have a problem with people making the personal choice of taking steroids. Right. Your body, you do you, great. Bingo. Uh, but when it comes to taking advice of personal trainers that are taking steroids, this could be fairly problematic. The steroids don't so, affect their brain. They're still able to think. Everything stays the same mentally. It doesn't impact your brain. Cognitively, sure? they don't sure? lose their knowledge of how to personally train someone. That's an interesting point. Oh, I you took think, steroids. I forgot. <laughs> you think that they actually have the knowledge. Well, we're going to evolve on that idea. Right. But before we do, let's imagine ourselves. Pretend that we've never been to the gym before. Let's get back to that time you know, for all of us, that was what, like 40 years ago or something? <laughs> We're not that old. No, no, no. It was a really long time ago. But remember, imagine you are just starting off on your muscle building career. Mm -hmm. You look around and are you going to pick someone that is, let's say, overweight to train you? Probably not. What you're going to choose is that impeccably muscular person that seems to know what they're doing because they look the part. Right. And then you find out, you talk to them and they tell you that you should focus on high volume programming, mm -hmm. which you find out later is not that efficient for you. And it's no surprise because you're a natural. What? <laughs> and, you know. She's wrong. She's wrong. It, so you're saying that high volume training is really efficient for anyone starting? No, first. Oh, perfect. No, okay, no. and let's move on. I'm just. So I it depends what you mean point. by high volume training. But yes, your point, which is that some not frequency. Mm -hmm. We're talking about many, many reps in one go, lightweight. Okay. You're suggesting people on PEDs can take more volume. Uh, and it still be successful than someone else who might enter into I'm the realm of junk that. volume. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm saying for someone that's starting off, that's not the most efficient way of building muscle. And if someone on steroids may recommend that because it works for them. Now, I found this article on T Nation and it was really interesting because it looked through uh, the different kind of questions that could apply for a natural lifter versus an enhanced lifter. So for example, who should do cardio, uh, sorry, more cardio? Mm -hmm. The answer is enhanced. Who should increase their training frequency? Natural. Who should limit their volume? There's tons of these questions and it's answering basically who it is better for, the natural or the enhanced, and then they go into the detail of why. That, show, that alone shows you that to achieve the body for a natural, to get to the same results that a natural has versus a steroid, the journey is completely different. Okay, uh, I gotta chime in here. A couple things about this. I'm not denying some of the points that you're making, which, are, which is, if I understand you correctly, there's gonna be differences in programming and style and certainly in recovery well, between the enhanced to and the build on, To build on that, yeah. uh, something that someone that's on steroids, they can recommend to eat a ton of protein to grow muscle. You don't yes. need that much protein to do that. Yes. To eat six or seven meals per day. Like, okay. no, a okay. little obsessive. Okay. We're entering into hyperbolic territory. I totally, oh, yes, totally hyperbolic. I, I totally get what you're saying here, which is that the steroided up user will have a different program. But the question isn't whether or not they 
weight train differently. God, bodybuilders often do a lot more volume as you're pointing out. Some argue that they do a lot more fluff and pump style exercises. It works for them, all that kind of stuff. That doesn't mean that they don't know and don't apply the basic fundamental principles of training and therefore can train someone else. When I go train someone, I don't apply principles that I'm necessarily using for myself in every single situation. Of course there's going to be differences. So if I'm an enhanced user, I don't go to someone and say, oh, you know, you should do the same volume I do and you should eat the same amount I eat. That's ridiculous. So there's no doubt your point is there's some differences between their training styles and regimens. But because I'm an enhanced lifter doesn't mean that I'm going to recommend my over-the-top regimen because I'm a bodybuilder. I'm not going to do that. That's what makes it so interesting for me to know, let's say you're right, that these individuals know exact and are able to cater to the specific needs of their clients. Exactly. If, if, we, we, if you're assuming, you're making that's a That's what a good assumption. personal trainer does. That's a good personal trainer. Fine, but that doesn't, this is, if you know the principles of that, yes. why not apply them to yourself? Why use steroids? And if you think that they are, okay, so listen, I'm going to share with you a phenomenal study. Okay. Actually, there's been lots of studies to prove the same thing, but in this particular one, it was fairly extensive for 10 weeks. They followed men, uh, I believe it was 43 men, and they had four groups. Group number one. 43 men, large sample size, but continue. A lot of these studies are like that. Okay, so, fair enough, fair enough. So, group number one. No drugs, no exercise. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's too fun to do. Yeah, yeah. Very relaxing. Group two. No exercise, but drug use. Group number three, natural, so no drugs, but exercise. Group four, drugs and okay. exercise. Right. Okay, so what are the results? So, group number one, no exercise, no drugs, no significant changes. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Group number two, I will leave for later, because that's the big reveal. <laughs> group three, exercise and natural, uh, we're able to build about four pounds of muscle on average. Fair enough. Cool. Group four, exercise and drug use, build 13 pounds of muscle. Very nice. Okay. But that's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is group number two. Group number two. No exercise and drug use. Yes. Remember, group three, natural, exercise, four pounds. Yeah? Yes. Group number two, mm -hmm. seven pounds. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, so I just, I just want to say, so a great summary of this particular study was in a blog called A Workout Routine, and I love this quote. I love this quote. You can basically go to the gym and bang your head into the wall for 45 minutes and still end up getting significantly better results than the typical natural guy training correctly and working his okay. arm off. Okay, I love it. Exactly. I, I love it. Exactly. I got to chime in with two different points here. No. Nope. I want to finish. I want to finish the point that I'm trying to make. Uh-huh. The dangerous assumption that this individual knows what they're talking about because they look the part can actually hide incompetency. Yes, I completely agree with this and I think that's a fair point. No one is denying that the use and taking of steroids or PEDs enhances muscle and according to this study enhances muscle building even if you do nothing, which I think I've heard a lot of steroid users actually argue against, but we'll go with the scientific evidence. But the point here isn't whether or not they're playing a different game and this is what gets me to my point a lot of people want to identify with their trainers. And you're saying, no one can identify with these guys. They're able to build muscle even without doing good exercises or in the case that you brought up with group two, any exercises. That, that is irrelevant to the bigger question. Are they a good trainer? There might be some bad ones. There might be some who build muscle but don't have proper training principles. And as a result of that, they aren't good trainers. But there might also be good ones who, yes, they're jacked up on steroids, but still understand fundamental training principles. And this is the point that I, I, I want to take us to. We shouldn't get so obsessed with wanting to identify with the person. They have to have the same lived experience as us that we overlook the fact that an enhanced athlete can have extensive knowledge, maybe even more than a regular athlete or a regular fitness professional when it comes to training even an addy. And we shouldn't take this wanting to identify with the person so far. Greg actually gets really fired up about this particular point, and I want to roll that clip. Okay. I can be natural and coach somebody enhanced. I can be enhanced and coach someone natural. 
I coach natural and enhanced people, just like I coach women. You think I can't coach a girl just because I'm a guy? That's almost as stupid as the people that say, oh, Greg, you can't coach me because you're only five foot six, you're a little manlet. Nah, 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 nah. I'm six foot four. How could you possibly coach me? What? Okay, while his rant is humorous and maybe a bit hyperbolic, there's a really good point here, which is the point I'm trying to get at. I, I have personally trained all sorts of different bodies. Uh, young women, older women, young men, older men, extremely obese people who need to lose weight, people who need to uh, pack on muscle because their muscles have atrophy due to injury, people who have had uh, severe diseases and need a lot of rehab in their program, people who are recovering from heart issues, people with hernias, and the list goes on. So he's just bragging right now. Yeah, yeah, just, I, yeah. I, it's just it's just a brag. It's just an unnecessary flaw. I hear you've trained lots of different kinds of people. But my what point. Time? But my point is, have I gone through the lived experiences of all of these people? No, I'm clearly not an elderly woman with osteoporosis. No. But I know how to train one, and I did a pretty good job at it. And so my argument here is that we shouldn't be necessarily looking for someone that's like us in every single way. The enhanced athlete might be just as good, in some cases better, and in some cases worse. It depends on the trainer themselves. Dear sir, either I did not make my argument correctly because you have completely misunderstood me, or you just didn't listen. Uh -huh. I'm not talking about identification with the person. In fact, remember when we were describing our early experiences and we said, who are we going to look for inspiration? to get the bod that we want. It's not the person that looks like us. It's going to be the person that we want to aspire to. And that's where the danger is. Because, that's where the danger because is. you're suggesting that we're going to a trainer that is steroided up and we think we can look like them. And It doesn't. That is not a qualification. That is not a qualification. So dear people, if you're going to choose a trainer, you can choose someone that is on steroids. That's my point. That's fine, you can. But make sure that you are A, aware that they are on steroids. Agreed. And B, look at their other qualifications because just being on steroids and just looking great is not a good end all qualification. Fair enough. All right, and on that note, we're gonna be wrapping up here, but we wanna know what you think. Please let us know in the comments below. Are you pro-steroid trainers? Are you nay-steroid trainers? Do you, are you even more confused now than you were before? Let us know, we wanna hear it, and if there's any topics you want us to cover, let us know as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.